Hello. I'm Jean, and I'm going to talk about genetic algorithms. Genetic algorithm is a search heuristic that mimics the process of natural evolution and uses techniques such as crossover, selection and mutation to solve a problem. But before going any further, let's have a short biology lesson. Every organism has a set of rules describing how that organism is built up from the tiny building blocks of life. These rules are encoded in the genes of an organism, which in turn are connected together into long strings called chromosomes. Each gene represents a specific trait of the organism, like eye or hair color, and has several different settings. For example, the settings for color of eyes could be blue, green, or brown. When two organisms mate, the resultant offspring has chromosomes from both its parents. This is called crossover. Occasionally, the offspring's gene might be mutated. This means that the elements of DNA are a bit changed. Here, we have to note that not all organisms survive to reproduce, while some organisms might reproduce more than other. So, now that we have a general idea of the techniques used in natural evolution, let's see how a genetic algorithm is used to solve a problem. To understand better how a genetic algorithm works, we are going to demonstrate the steps that are needed to generate a specific color. In our case, we'll try to create the purple color. Before we start with the algorithm, we have to find a way to encode each solution of the problem into a string, which is equivalent with a chromosome. Usually a bit string is used to represent the solution. So in our problem each chromosome is a different color and is represented by a unique bit string. This string is its RGB value. To begin with, we'll have to generate a population of random chromosomes. This is our initial population. Each one of these chromosomes represent a different solution. The next steps will be repeated until the required solution is found, for us is the purple color. Firstly, we have to test each chromosome to see how close it is at solving the problem and assign a fitness score accordingly. Fitness score is the measurement of how good that chromosome is at solving the problem. Now that all the chromosomes are evaluated, we can choose a number of chromosomes to mate and create the new generation. Each pair of the selected chromosomes will create two offspring. Each offspring will be created with crossover. What crossover is? Let's have a closer look to an example. These are the parent chromosomes. The simplest way to do this is to randomly choose a crossover point. Let's say that our crossover point is 4. The first offspring will take everything before this point from the first parent and everything after this point from the second parent. For the second offspring we do exactly the opposite. We take the first part from the second parent and the second part from the first parent. With crossover we hope that the new chromosomes will have the good parts from their parents and therefore better solution. In order to prevent genetic algorithm from falling into local extreme, the chromosomes from the new population could be mutated. Zero becomes one. One becomes zero. After some generations, we see that we get the color we wanted from the beginning. Purple. Based on the previous description how genetic algorithms work, you will be surprised the domains of their use in the real world. Some real-world uses of genetic algorithms are automotive design, robotics, evolvable hardware, optimized telecommunications routing, computer gaming, encryption and code breaking. Using genetic algorithms to design the shape and aerodynamic of a vehicle you can get as a result several combinations of well-designed vehicles that are faster, lighter, more fuel-efficient and safer. As we can see on the video the different colors of the vehicle represent the genes of each chromosome. As the time pass, new generations are better from previous ones. To conclude, genetic algorithms use the principles of selection and evolution to produce several solutions to a given problem, and are one of the best ways to solve a problem for which little is known. They are very general algorithms and so will work well in any search space. All you need to know is what the solution should be able to do well, and a genetic algorithm will create a high quality solution. Then again, they can also produce solutions that only work within the test environment and fail once you try to use them in the real world.